Hi, Ryan. Hi. <laughs> so nice to see you. Okay. I en- I enjoyed this film so much. It just it it filled my heart with so much joy and laughter and hope. I, I can't even find enough adjectives to talk about it. So thank, thank you. you so very much. Thank you. I, I want to know what may, okay, so you're a storyboard artist and now you didn't foray into songwriting. What made <laughs> you decide to do um, some original songs for this piece? Well, uh, I, I grew up playing music. I, I um, both my grandparents were musicians on my, on my mom's side and my dad's side. So I kind of grew up like, um really around music and I mean my grandpa taught me to play guitar when I was like 12 or something and you know I never forget um (laughs) so when when I had the opportunity to make a project that would be completely mine you know to craft something from the ground up and and that would be like hey if you like a dream project and the cool thing about Netflix is they really embrace that they embrace that like you know that kind of creativity it had to be a musical and I got my um good friend and, and uh, now songwriting partner, Alex Garingas involved, because I think he's a genius and he writes amazing songs. And he's like one of the most underrated songwriters in, in Hollywood, working in the business. Um, we started working, I was working on the story. He was going to work on the music and we, he was like, okay, so what's the next song? What song do you want to make? And so we just started talking and then he starts working in the room and then I'm contributing and we're just, and he, after that first day, he just kind of turned to me and said, I'm not writing another song with you without you. So it's 50, 50 from here on, here we go. And so we wrote probably 30 plus songs by the time we were done. You know, I think there's about like eight to 10 that made it into the movie, but we've, we've got a lot on the, on the chopping room floor, but, um, but yeah, it was awesome. It really reignited my love for music and songwriting and um, to have people like Mary Lambert and Michael J. Woodard to write for, uh is kind of cheating <laughs> their voices their voices are phenomenal so are we good. gonna hear some of the new music in i love arlo yes yes there's a ton of music in that um so we're gonna have you know the the um soundtrack in the movie come out april 16th and then later on sometime i don't know exactly when um we'll have the series come out and the series is going to have a lot more music um as well and so uh that has been really cool to continue the journey with those characters, but then also to continue writing songs for these amazingly talented singers is just like, it's a, it's a dream project. It's really become something so special. So. I'm so glad the journey is continuing. New York city is an integral part of this story. You know, Arlo going to New York to find his dad. What was the first time you went to New York? Like, and what was the first thing you did when you got there? Oh my gosh. That's a good question. (laughs) I have to think back. When was the first time? I love, first off, I love New York. Um, Me too. <laughs> I, As you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> and I love pizza. And I think <laughs> when, uh, you know, teeny tiny Tony jumps into that pizza, that's me every time I get off the plane. Like, that's the first <laughs> thing I do. I like the last time I was in, in New York, last time I was in New York right before the pandemic and I was recording Jonathan Van Ness and I think I ate pizza five times in like 48 hours. I was just like, I need it. Cause like, you know, at, LA just doesn't, it doesn't hold a candle to New York pizza. There's still, it just doesn't happen. So yeah, I do like, it's crazy. I'll eat meals and then still go get pizza in between meals. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I love the city. I love the energy of that city. And I love, and I think what it, what it was for the reason it worked for the movie is it's so aspirational, you know, it's kind of, there's a, it's gritty. And it's, and it's like, it can be intense and it's artistic and, and there's, you know, a ton of people and, and it's not always like, you know, doesn't have to be like beautifully clean to be special. You know, I kind of, I, I I don't think that's the case at all, but there is a very aspirational thing with New York. It's like you get there and people from all over the world come to New York, look up at those buildings and, and they want to take on the world. And I felt like that's what Arlo's doing. You know, he's taking on the world. So. Like Not only is he taking on the world, but he's making home his heart where his home is or his yeah. home where his heart is. Yeah, totally. And, and I, I enjoy I enjoyed this so very much. I'm so looking forward to the series coming out. And thank, thank you. you so much for taking time to talk to me today. I really wholeheartedly appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thanks for everything. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye now. Bye. To keep up with the Curvy Critic, like our page here, click that subscribe button, and click that bell for notifications. Love, peace, and hair.